Right, hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Something slightly different yet again today. I'm trying to um, to kick things off with uh, quite a new series, especially uh, if we can pin it to every Friday or every other Friday and talk about what's on your table and in your glass. <laughs> Hopefully I can uh, encourage you guys to share your um, your tables and your glasses in the comment section below. And let's exchange our experiences, our preferences, and our pre and our favorite uh, games and drinks and any other things that uh, make our time more enjoyable, especially on a Friday afternoon or a Friday night after work. Um, yeah. So let me kick things off with uh, with my review of uh, well, not a review, overview of what's on my table tables really and what's in my glass let's start with the latter shall we as you may have seen from the thumbnail we're enjoying this glen glossa i can't actually see it properly can you glen glossa whiskey uh this one is a torfa release richly peated as you can see 50 percent alcohol until filtered and natural color this one comes from Glenglossa Distillery, something that you don't usually come across that often in your favorite whiskey shops. However, if you do, then by all means, go for it, buy it and enjoy it, because this is a very, very nice, um, well, they say richly peated. It's, it's not up to Isle of Isla standards as far as peated whiskies go. However, this one, this one is a different, different type of uh, peated whiskey. This one comes from Highlands, so you can expect something <clears throat> less of a peat monster, but something uh, more enjoyable, especially for the beginners on their PT journey. Glen Glossa Distillery has been um, <clears throat> uh, relaunched several years ago, and Torfa is one of the one of the newer releases. This is the staple um offering from Glenglossa these days you can come across more sophisticated ones especially the older releases before they were shut down but also from the uh from the uh age of uh, um 2010 2015 something like that this one is no age statement so yeah don't quote me on that one this is this one is probably five or six years old, something like that. Anyways, Glen Glossa is in my glass tonight. Let me show you. Very nice strawy color. Beautiful peaty notes. Uh, you just have to appreciate whiskies like that if you're into whiskies, of course. Anyways, that's what's in my glass. Now let's see what's on my table. And we have three fantastic games that I'd like to um, tell you about. Uh, why I'm playing them, what I enjoy, what I don't like about them, things like that, and whether I recommend them for you or not. So first one to, um, to kick things off is Trudvang Legends. Trudvang Legends, yeah? This one, well, this one has a lot of uh, bad press around it, uh, related with a lot of delays in the delivery of the game, uh, flawed Kickstarter, flawed mechanics, rules. The, the, rule, the rule book is absolutely <laughs> terrible. But once you go through it, uh, especially if you watch a lot of um, gameplays on YouTube and you just, you know, grasp uh, the idea behind uh, the mechanics, the playthrough, the, the, the phases, the turns. This one is actually quite enjoyable, I have to tell you. I'm playing with two ladies. One is a healer, the other one is like a mage uh, of some sorts. Cutley and... Uh, what's her name? Lidana. Yeah, we're actually going through our third or fourth adventure from the book. I will not be telling you which one because this game can be uh, full of spoiler spoilers and I'd like to um, avoid doing that. I really like the game. It reminds me a lot of uh, Folklore The Afflection apart from the character development. 
you know, you, you go through the uh, the world map, you come across different events, you don't have as many as you do in Fall Core of the Affliction because that the latter game has a lot of expansions that improve the game significantly. But if you compare a core box to core box, they, they are reasonably similar, apart from character development, which is um, which is absolutely fantastic in Fall Core of the Affliction. I love it to bits. And we will be playing that game soon on the channel, but not today. We, we won't be talking about folklore today. We 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 are talking about True Bank Legends. So what you what you can see right now is the world map through which you uh, you go with your with your party of heroes and you explore different locations. You uh, carry out different quests. You can go on a side quest. You can perform. Uh, the the main quest you go through a thick book of uh, stories and chapters and you just go through a narrative there's a lot to read but the story is quite engaging it's a generic fantasy uh, quest um, adventure kind of thing but it's still very enjoyable and even though you can come across a lot of bad reviews, bad opinions about it, about mechanics, about uh, grindiness, about lack of variety. Yeah, some of it is true, but still, I just got uh, sucked by this game and I just can't wait to, uh, to play it. And actually, I will do that uh, tonight. Uh, we will try to finish our, our adventure looking for the Lost Dwarven King. Enough said. <laughs> so there we go. Our first game for tonight that I'd like to uh, show you and showcase it to you. Truth Bank Legends. I recommend it to everybody who enjoys lightweight role-playing games, narrative, uh, stories, uh, very, very light development of your characters that mostly revolves around feats or skills can upgrade your skills, then you draw runes from your bag, so on and so forth. You've, you've probably either read about this or you've seen it on other videos. So I won't be going through that. Um, I enjoy it, I like it, and I actually went through their Kickstarter page. And if they deliver on their promise and they provide us with all the expansions that they've um, advertised on the website, this game can be absolutely brilliant brilliant to say the least so i really do hope that a company like simon will keep up uh, um, will keep their promises and this game will be released in full in its entirety because i think it deserves it and it will expand on the variety on replayability on the character and enemies selection significantly right so this was the very first game for today the second one, let me just move around slightly to the next table, to the next station. And of course, this is one of my favorites. You've seen it in different videos on my channel. Warhammer Quest Cursed City. This one is actually expanded with custom made scenarios with uh, new enemies and new quests. Mostly a quest for the Briar Queen, but not, not necessarily. Um, I'm waiting for a lot of um, extra miniatures to be painted and added to the game, like Skaven, more undead, ghosts, and what sorts of, um, what have you, uh, night hunts, salt blights, whatever. You know, I have quite a lot of them waiting, uh, waiting in the queue to be painted. Why do I like this game? Oh, there's a lot. To be uh, to be said about that, the dice mechanic, different characters, the miniatures, the simplicity of the mechanics. Okay, some people say it's repetitive, it's grindy. It is, yeah, it can be, but still, I quite enjoy you know the combinations of different characters, the the dice manipulation. You know, you roll your dice, and depending on the on the value, you, you get to do certain skills of your characters. I just quite quite enjoy that the randomness of the game. Uh, I'm talking about <clears throat> custom made characters. This is Banshee, something that you won't find in the original box. And I actually stopped playing. This is her turn. She rolled two on her beha behavior chart, so as you can see, she will soul drain us soon. 
Uh, she will roll d12 and she will heal herself and then attack with charge. Let's zoom in quickly on the on the battlefield. We're playing one of the deliverance missions, as you can see if you're familiar with the game. The grave tide is after us, so not that far away from us. We haven't been lucky with um, locating the um, um, the quest locations. There's one. There's one over here. But so far we haven't been lucky with finding too many of them. And yeah, the night is coming. So we have to hurry up, I suppose. So that's Warhammer Quest Cursed City with a lot of upgrades from uh, custom made content. There you go. Cursed City. And last but not least, our most recent addition to the collection is the Space Hulk. Okay, Space Hulk, the board game. Absolutely fantastic, full of atmosphere, climate. Just look at it. Just look at it, how it presents itself on the table. I absolutely adore it. This is the uh, setup for for the very first mission since I'm learning the game and I'm you know I, I'm I'm a, I'm a newbie in Space Hawk. So as you can see, if you again if you're familiar with the game, you know this is the setup for the very first mission that the brothers will embark on. And as you can see, they're already there in the in the torpedoes and they will. Uh, <coughs> They will hit the Space Hawk soon, trying to get through the very first mission. So if you're interested, guys, I might, you know, post it on the channel. And let's see if, it, if that's something that you enjoy watching. I will most definitely enjoy playing this game. I just couldn't wait for it to arrive from the painter. But here it is, after weeks and months of waiting, due to different reasons. Here we are, <coughs> our brother is ready to embark on their mission. There we go. Today, again, something slightly different. Friday night with what's on your table and in your glass. So here we are. These are the three games I'm playing currently. One against another, <laughs> one after another. Yeah, three of them right there, waiting for me to um, yeah to have fun with them. But but I suppose I'll just start with Trudvang tonight, and we'll see how far we can go and what stories we will uncover in the storybook. So here we are. Hopefully you enjoy that um, slight change from different from from the usual um, videos that you can come across on my channel so i highly encourage you to uh, post your um, games that you have on the table and you know whatever you have in your glass while playing the game is it is it a fine whiskey gin wine beer or just water or a juice whatever whatever is up you know Whatever, whatever you enjoy while playing the games. Share them in the comments and let's see. Maybe we can, we can, uh, we can show ourselves what we enjoy doing while playing the fantastic board games. Right, thank you very much for watching. I suppose I'll stop recording and start playing this fantastic, fantastic game. Thanks a lot for watching. Please let me know what you think of this different for of, of this different format. Whether this is something that you um, yeah that you would like to see uh, developed in the future. Until then, thanks a lot for watching, and see you soon. Bye bye.